Hey everybody, we're back here and we have got our rocket pretty much ready to go, except we need to attach the streamer. So for this part, we're going to need the streamer. Let me get myself out of the way here a bit. We're going to need the streamer. And um, if you have mylar, that works really good for this too, by the way. It looks really cool and shiny. But um, we're just going to use the basic one. And we're going to need our clear tape that was included in your kit. Um, if you are going to use the default cone that came with it, that should have been glued together earlier. You won't need to do sanding. But if you do have a 3D printed nose cone like I'm going to use, we will be sanding it before we tie it on to everything. So let's go ahead and, of course, to do the sanding, if you have the 3D printed nose cone, you will need a piece of sandpaper too. All right, that makes sense. Okay. Let's get that lined up a little bit better. All right, so let's get started here. Um, let's take a look at the instructions. So here we are, we're online for the instructions here. And what we're going to focus on, I'm going to really zoom into this part right here today. And by the way, any Estes model rocket, you can get the instructions online at the Estes website, um, at the product page. Every one of their rockets you can you can download. And I, I recommend if you're going to get into model rocketry, you always download the instruction book before you buy it and make sure you're ready to do all those things because some rockets are going to ask you to do stuff you don't want to have to do. And some of them are you're like, oh, yeah, I can do that. So you can always download their instructions. I hope some of you take up model rocketry as a hobby. If you've ever been to Hobby Lobby, that's a local place right here in town where they have a ton of model rockets that you can buy. And um, this kit here was a low cost. I give it to you for free, but you can continue this hobby later. All right, so here we go. So what we're going to do is it looks like they're telling, asking us here that when we tie it onto the nose cone, we need to make a double knot. We're not going to put in the recovery wadding until we're ready to launch it. We're going to skip that step for now. We are going to attach this and fold it up using some clear tape. Okay. Now, our nose cone is not ready to go yet. So let's take a look. If you have a 3D printed nose cone, this is for you guys first and foremost. We want to sand it. The thing with 3D printing is it prints by drawing layer after layer and stacking molten, melted plastic on top of each other as it fuses together. Fused filament fabrication, making stuff with melted together plastic filament. But the problem with that process is, is that each one of those layers that gets stacked leaves a, I guess I would call an artifact. Something that's not a part of our design, but these little, you can hear them as I scrape across them. They're these what called layer lines. Now look, the part of our nose, our 3D printed nose cone, let's get this stuff out of the way, that goes inside the rocket, you don't need to sand that yet. You might. We're going to sand that one on the next, in the next one. You'll see in a second, okay? Right now what we want to do is the part that actually sticks out, so that's this part from here up. When you get your 3D printed nose cone back, you're going to want to go, and I'm not going to do all of it on the camera right now because it takes a little while. You want to apply this, unlike the wood, you want to put Siri and then cardboard. This is plastic and you need to put a little bit of pressure. Don't push as hard as you can, but a little bit of pressure on there is going to help you out quite a bit. What's going to happen is it's going to start looking kind of fuzzy. It's going to really stop being clear and that's fine. We're going to paint, it doesn't need to be clear. We're going to paint over it anyways. But what we're doing is we're sanding down those layer lines. So they, they're still going to be there a little bit, but it's going to help to get rid of some of those layer lines. You can see some of the stuff is still sticking out, but as I do this, be careful that you don't rough up your own, your hand or whatever when you're sanding. And so I go around, you know, I could do the top up here a little bit, put some pressure. If it's not sanding and getting, it should feel smoother. It'll, it's kind of weird because in some ways it, it, it looks more rough but it, it'll, it'll end up feeling less rough, even though it looks like it doesn't look as good as it used to when it was all clear and shiny. But remember shininess and how it looks in terms of like just the light refracting off of it, we don't care. We're going to be painting over it with acrylic hobby or acrylic uh, craft paints, which will be the next thing we do after this video, right? That'll be the next step. Mine's going to be harder to sand than most of yours because this part right here is not quite as smooth. But again, the more smooth you get it now, the better it's going to look and the easier it is going to be to paint. Because if it's not smooth when you paint it, you have to paint over the top and put another coat on it. Eh, it's not a big deal. Now what you're going to do is you're going to 
try it out. Now we're going to fit the sanding for this part. And again, if you have this nose cone here, you can try it out. It'll probably fit just fine. You don't need to sand this one, the one that came with the kit. But if you're using a 3D printed one, what you're going to do is you're going to put it in here. Now what we want here is we do not want it to be able to wiggle around. So that's pretty tight. It doesn't move back and forth. And what we don't want is we don't want it to be so loose that it just falls right out. It shouldn't fall out, but you should be able to just lightly grab it and pull it out. Mine feels pretty good the way it is. It's not too tight. It's not too loose. I don't have to put much pressure, but if it's too loose, you guys, guess what? If it's too loose, the explosive gases will leak out the side and it might not deploy your parachute. Or this might rattle around and cause the rocket to curve its flight path because the rocket isn't straight because that nose cone's going out. If it's too loose, all you do is you take your masking tape and you put one lap of tape around here to make it bigger and you put it in and see if that fits better, okay? If it's too tight, then you take your sandpaper and you've got to keep sanding on this. Any part that sticks out extra, sand it down until it gets smaller, okay? And then it will fit, okay? So now we've taken care of sanding our nose cone. And again, if you want to use the original one, you don't need to worry about that. Just you're ready for the next step. Okay, so back to the instructions. Let's tie it on. Tie it on with a double knot, okay? Well, remember I told you I didn't actually take it off. It's still there. So let me... Okay, there, there. Come on. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I've got my shock cord, and remember we glued that in in one of the previous steps. Can you see it? There it is, it's glued in there, and it's all dried up. You know, mine, you can see I got a tiny little lump sticking out on the side. See that little piece? I don't want anything to snag on it, but I think that should be fine. You know, if I, if I, I could actually reach in there with a file and file it down. I might do that later, like a, like a fingernail, uh, a nail file or something, but... It probably doesn't stick out that much to be a big deal. If you got a whole big chunk sticking out, we need to take care of that. But okay. So now what they say to do is to loop it through right up here, wait, right there, and give it a double knot. Awesome. Now, this is really easy to loop through there. These would take a bit more patience. I recommend you cut that so it's at kind of an angle and it sticks out a bit. And you go back and forth until that wheels, weasels its way through there. And I know it sucks. It takes a little while. You agitate it and push. Oh, there it is. It's almost out. There it is. So now it's come out. That's awesome. And we need to leave a, a little bit extra, don't we? Because we need a double knot. Okay, we want a backup. In case one knot comes undone, we got another one to back it up. Okay? Now, a double knot is just simply cross the lines, you take it, and you cross the lines over each other and bring it through the loop once. And then you do the same thing twice. You do the same thing. Now you got one knot. It's called a double knot because you double it up. You do it twice. So cross it over, ah, under, and around. This, You know what? This Every time I do a knot and I think about the knot, it always reminds me of my kindergarten teacher. I don't know about when you were a kid, but when I was a kid, uh, the kindergarten teacher used to always teach us how to tie our shoes. Okay, And we, it looks like it appears that we have a little bit, uh, in this case, I have a little bit extra kind of sticking off the end of that. And you know what? I just didn't bring my scissors with me. So later what I would do, I don't want to cut it off too short, but what I would probably do here, yep, you're going to use a pair of scissors. I did it the old-fashioned. Leave some hanging off, otherwise the knot will slip out. Oh, it did. Bad Mr. Woodchick. See, don't be like Mr. Woodchick. Do it the right way. Okay, I got my knot back in. A little piece that broke off. Okay, so this is good, except you know what? Now, when this gets deployed, there's nothing to slow it down. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this piece, and it's called the streamer. This is pretty cool. It's just a big high visibility color that we can see easily so that when it's coming down in the sky, people can go, hey, there it is, and they point up to it, and we can all look and make sure it doesn't hit us in the head when it comes down, right? Which is very unlikely. In a big football field, it's extremely unlikely that you would get hit by a tiny rocket. But 
If you're not paying attention, it could. So then we use a high visibility color, and this flaps in the wind as it comes down and slows it down. It doesn't have to slow it down much, you guys. This is a lightweight rocket. It's not going to hit the ground like a lump of cement. It's made out of paper and cardboard. It just needs to kind of slow it down a little bit. That's it. Let's see what the instruction book says. Looking right over here. Um, okay. So we're going to fold it three times. We're going to use clear tape to attach it. Okay, cool. That's pretty easy to do. Let's do that. Um, okay, so don't use the masking tape. That doesn't stick well to um, rubber and plastic. Instead, we're going to use the clear tape. Now, some of you guys, you're going to, I didn't give you the dispenser. I just gave you the tape roll. Man, I gave you, you know, in your kits, you should have a full roll of tape, which is way more than you need for this project. And I mean way more. I gave you, let's say, 100 times as much tape as you need to do. So you're going to take a piece. This is the worst kind of tape. Man, I'm really sorry. If you got this tape, I, I apologize to you. <laughs> this is the type that just doesn't tear well. OK, so something like this piece right here. And I'm going to take it sticky side facing up. OK, now where does it say to do that? About two inches from the top. So I'm just going to go down from the top of this about two inches and make sure there's no twists in your cord. About like right there, let's say. OK, now I'm going to take this. you got to have some skills here. And I'm going to run that right down the middle so it's sticking to my piece of tape. The sticky side is still facing up. Then I'm going to take one end of this, just the end piece, and we're going to put it down so that that is up against that tape. There we go. But I don't want it sticking to this other side of the tape, because that's going to fold over. It's going to double over like that. And now I don't want this to come off ever. This is not something you want to come off. If it does, you have kind of a failure of your recovery system, and that's not good if you want to get your rocket back in one piece. So I'm going to see this tape, this piece, it didn't get the tape over here, so I'm going to reinforce it on this side with another piece of tape and kind of fold it over. Don't put too much tape. It'll get stiff and big, and don't make it too big, because if it gets stiff and big, and then it'll be hard to pack inside of this little itty bitty tube. Okay? Okay, finally, guys, to stop everything from getting, one of the things we got to do to stop everything from getting tangled up, I don't, I just showed you that I really don't, before I pull it, I definitely don't want to cut it too short. We saw that earlier. So I'll leave about half an inch or so on there. Eh, I don't like that much even, but I think it should be okay. I could tuck it underneath here if I have to. So, all right. So there's that part. That should be good enough. And what do they tell us to do? When we pack it up, they tell us to fold it up in thirds. We're going to pack it up, even though you have to unpack it later. But just to try it out, let's pack it up right now. Because we have to unpack it at launch time when we put our recovery wadding in. But I'll do that with you when you show up to the field to launch it. And then we'll install your engine, and it's ready to go. Technically, guys, this rocket is done as we see right now. But it's really boring looking. That's why we're going to put on paint in the next step. So let's take a look at the instructions. Looks like they're folding it into threes, and then they roll it up. Look, they fold it into thirds, then they roll it up, and then they put it all and stuff it down into the tube. All right, here we go. Let's give that a try. OK, so we got our, I don't really have a big enough camera to do this on the whole thing on there. So let's fold it over. Oh, you can see it right here, though. Maybe I could do it like this, huh? So you have this. I don't think I can do it like this, but whatever. Let's try. We're going to throw the, just fold this into thirds. OK, so fold it over once. When you fold into thirds, after the first hold, this, this doubled up section should be about the same length as this section. Kind of like folding an, um, a letter to go inside of an envelope. It's kind of a thing of the past, isn't it? OK, so there's one fold. And I fold it over again this I beat up old scissors out of the way okay 
And then we take it after it's like that, and you can just kind of roll it up like a sleeping bag. Okay, just roll it on up. So we're making a roll. I don't want to get it too out of here. Make sure it goes on there right. That's it. Perfect, but that should do the trick. Okay, so now I'm going to hold on to this as I switch the scene. Hold on to this, and what the, the best way I found is it's, it's kind of hard to do. So let me see if we can go down here and see this. Um, it's difficult to do on the camera. So what I'm going to do is just get it started going down into the tube a little bit if you can do that. And then I just wiggle it. Once it gets a start, start going down the tube, you can kind of wiggle it. <sighs> Come on, get in there. Okay. You can get a pencil too, or a pen it can help you. Oh, this is not going well. Okay. So you can kind of help you. This I'm, I'm having trouble getting it down there, but you can shove it down deep into the tube with the eraser end of the pencil will kind of grab it. Usually this isn't so hard, but I'm trying to do it on the camera, and this is just not, it's not going well, well for me. Okay. Let me pause this and then 